Good morning, church. It is good to see you all this morning. I am glad you have joined us. <clears throat> Excuse me, here for worship today. You can take these first few minutes here to gather items for worship. If you have candles, you might light those candles as a way to invite the light of Christ into our presence today as we worship together. I'm going to light our two candles here. You can light your candles as well. <clears throat> I'd also encourage you to gather uh, items so that you can participate in communion. Uh, bread or cracker, enough for everyone, and a cup of water or juice for everyone present, so you can have that available. Uh, a place uh, to signify is a place to receive offering, uh, monetary offerings, uh, your, your offering prayers. We have some beautiful uh, red lilies uh, decorating our table this morning, thanks to Tessa Blackheader, who brought those in for us to help celebrate Pentecost. Uh, you might also want uh, your Bible, would be a good thing to have. And your heart stones, if you have those available. This is the end of our Heart of the Matter series. Uh, but if you want to continue to keep those heart stones around and use those, please, please uh, make sure that you do that. <clears throat> but again, just gather those items here in this last minute. Um, greet each other. Uh, if, if you haven't liked our page, you can like our page. But be sure and uh, give a greeting out there to each other this morning. Hope you're all wearing your red. I can't see you, but I'm sure lots of you have on red. If you have on red, you might put a thumbs up there in the uh, comments today so that we know how many people remember to wear red for Pentecost today. But gather your items. Uh, light your candles. Gather uh, communion for yourself and those that are, are present with you. Uh, a place to receive your offering. Um, Anything else that you want to decorate your space with, your heart stones, those sorts of things, have all that gathered together. Sometimes I get pretty frustrated with myself. I have been following Christ for a while now. At least it feels that way. I have a pretty good idea of who God is as my Father. I know He created me. I know He loves me no matter what. And I understand how Jesus has redeemed me and become my Savior. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, I have to honestly say I have a lot of unanswered questions. It just doesn't seem to work for me. I look at other Christians and they seem to know exactly who the Holy Spirit is. The only problem is that one person's image of the Holy Spirit looks completely different than the next person's. They seem to have it all figured out, but I have questions. I read in the Bible where Jesus says, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on me but I don't know that I have ever felt that power. Jesus said we would do greater things than he did, but I have never come close to raising someone from the dead. What does power mean? In the book of Acts, the people closest to Jesus heal people with their shadows. Should I be able to do that? Should I be able to tell when people are lying to me? What is this speaking in tongues thing, really? I have seen some people do things under the power of the Spirit that makes me think, I don't want that power. But maybe my concept of power is different from God's. Maybe the things the Holy Spirit gives me power for are not sensational.
What if when Jesus said we would do greater things than him, he was talking about the way we live our lives, the decisions we make, the words we speak? What if the Holy Spirit is so powerful that he is the source in every Christ follower, no matter how different that looks? What if the Holy Spirit gives me the power to decrease so that God can increase? We're going to talk about that power today. And welcome again to worship. I am glad you are here with us this morning. If you have on red today, I want to see a thumbs up out there uh, when I check the comments later on. I want to know who remembered to wear red today besides me. Ha. I'm sure some of you did, and I'd love to know that. So we are going to worship through our worry and fellowship through our fear. Uh, on this day, I have a couple of questions for you to consider this morning. What is it that is pouring from your heart today? What is it that your heart is on fire for? And what winds of change do you want to blow through your life? Just a few things to keep in the back of our mind as we move into our time of worship and we uh, begin to sing together the Spirit song. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters, you called to the deep. Then you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep. And over the eons, you called to each thing. Awake from your slumbers and rise on your wings. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind on the sea you swept through the desert you stung with the sand and you gifted your people with the law of the land when you were confounded with idols and lies then you spoke through your prophets to open their eyes. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, 
wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill. Then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still. And down in the city you called once again when you blew through your people on the rush of the wind. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calming and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes. From the bondage of sorrow, the captives dream dreams. See visions, our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Oh, well. So glad you are here this morning on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, we have been spending time together each week in this format, remembering that our hearts are connected by the very Spirit of Christ within us, who is helping us, who is guiding us, who is giving us courage, um, and allowing us to be um, filled also with gratitude for one another. And all of this was inspired, of course, by the early church, who also was often uh, uh, coming together under very difficult circumstances, but they continued to do so and support each other, as we see in the book of Acts. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And so we are creating this temple, if you will, uh, within our hearts that connects us across boundaries of time and space and place. And so we share in worship together, knowing that we are connected through that amazing spirit that is within each and every one. One of us. Let us take a moment to pray and invite God uh, and the Spirit and Jesus into this space that we are worshiping in today. Will you pray with me? Holy and living God, the heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center ourselves on you. For you have made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us in every moment, with every breath, and in every step. Into your care, we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love, and life. Come, glorious God. Come, Brother Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and be present in a mighty, mighty way with our worship this day. It's through Christ that we pray. Amen. Let's have the kids gather round uh, for Children's Worship and Wonder with Pastor Linda. This is the day of Pentecost, the day that we celebrate the gift God has given us of the Holy Spirit. After Jesus went away, people came to Jerusalem to celebrate the great Thanksgiving feast of Pentecost. They came from several different countries. Moms and dads and their children.
Jesus' friends came too. They were waiting for the gift God had promised them of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, a great sound came and filled the room, and what appeared like flames of fire rested on each of them. They were so excited, they had to go and tell of the amazing things God had done. That God had raised Jesus from the dead. Now they were from several different countries, but they understood what the disciples were saying. And they asked, what shall we do? And Peter told them, change your ways, be baptized, washed, and clean, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is God's promise for you and for your children and for all whom God calls. Well, I wonder how these people felt when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. I wonder what they did once they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I wonder what the Holy Spirit calls us to do. Thank you, Pastor Linda. And now uh, just a, a quick little uh, community information. We are, again, this coming Monday, handing out community table to go meals or food, bags of food. If you know someone who would benefit from having a few extra items on their shelves of food, uh, please do direct them to our website or to uh, this Facebook page so they can get more information and, and come out and, and uh, receive those bags of food on Monday evening. And then the other uh, little bit of information I will share with you is that uh, we will still be refraining in June from gathering in this space for worship. Just I know some of you are curious about that, but we will continue as the, the, the uh, co cases of COVID continue to go up in our county. So let us now uh, go to God in prayer to gather together uh, our hearts, our minds, uh, to focus on uh, God and to, to lift our voices in prayer. If you have prayer concerns, <clears throat> excuse me, personally, that you would like to share with me, um, I would um, be honored to be able to hold your concerns in my time of prayer as well. So you can reach me through our website, uh, through um, text, email, uh, different ways that you can reach out to us and give us those prayer concerns. <clears throat> and then again, I would encourage you to write down those concerns and those prayers of intercession that you have been uh, participating in on your own so that we can give those in our offering a little bit later on. But for now, will you bow with me as we join together in prayer? Great and glorious God, throughout this Easter season, we have proclaimed that love is that which binds us to you, to Jesus, and to one another. On that day of Pentecost, the early church received the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling a message of love and unity to flow out from all and to all. Holy One, this week... Uh, has held very uh, heartbreaking news for our nation. News that reflects how much division still exists in our nation and indeed in our world. Lord, we tend to sit back and shake our heads and feel we can do nothing as we watch the scenes unfold across the media. But help us to realize we have access to amazing power through your Spirit 
a power that can change lives through love and grace, a power that allows us to see our differences as the beauty and blessing of the diversity you created, O oh God. May we be a people of this power. And as we reflect that power to those in our little part of the world, uh, let that power then ripple out as, as the waves of a pond that a, throne has been, a stone has been thrown into. May we live with the spirit of compassion and presence and realize the power that is within us, the gift that you have given us, O oh God, that sends us forth in ministry and witness. Lord, we also want to lift up to you this day those who are heavy on our hearts, who are struggling, Lord, those who we have concern for. Um, there are those, Lord, that are walking through grief. There are those that are dealing with illness. There are those, Lord, that are dealing with uh, depression and isolation. Um, and, and, Lord, many others that are struggling just now. And we lift those up individually to you just now. Lord, we also lift our praises to you, knowing that you are a mighty, mighty God that loves us and cares for us. Lord, that you want nothing but good to happen in this world, but you have given us dominion, and sometimes, Lord, as human beings, we don't make very good choices. Help us, Lord, to choose to walk in your way and to receive the power of your Spirit as our guide and director. Lord, come and be present just now as together, as community, Lord, as a, a body that loves you so, we say together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came... They were all together <clears throat> in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a rushing wind came from heaven and filled the entire house where they were sitting. <clears throat> they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Le jour de la Pentecost is a Cuando llegó el día de Pentecostés, 
todos estaban reunidos en un mismo lugar. De repente, vino del cielo concluido, como de un viento muy fuerte, que llenó todo el mundo. Vieron algo parecido a llamas de fuego, y que se separaron, y se colocaron sobre cara de un que estaban allí. Todos quedaron llenos del Espíritu Santo, y empezaron a hablar de tres idiomas, por el poder que les daba el Espíritu Santo. En Jerusalén estaban viviendo fieles, al oír el sonido, se reunió una multitud y estaban confundidos porque cada uno de ellos hablar en su propio idioma, muy sorprendidos y llenos de asistencia. ¿No son todos estos galés? ¿Cómo es posible que cada uno de nosotros los oiga hablar en nuestro propio idioma? Todos estaban desesperados y se preguntaban, ¿Qué está pasando? En cambio, otros de palabras diciendo, esos están borrachos. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're having some technical difficulties. The computer may have frozen. You may have to close it out and bring it back up. Odds are, if it's nothing's happening back there, sorry. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Pardon me? Yes. Yep. It's the little, it says easy worship is a blue arrow like thing. Should be on the main screen. Looks like a little blue pointer. Anyway, we'll go right along and she'll catch up when the computer decides it wants to work. <laughs> this is again the joy of being live, right? <laughs> Well, it just so happens that there was a, a small community um, where um, there happened to be one atheist in the community. Uh, they called him the village atheist. It was a very small community, and he wasn't a bad person. He just was not a believer, and he had no interest in attending church. And it just so happened that there was only one church in the town, and the church was, well, not much of a church. It was more of a social club uh, because it was really spiritually dead. One day, the church literally caught on fire and people came all running to see what was going on, to see how they might help and extinguish the flames. And along came also the village atheist. And someone noticed that uh, this person was there and they hollered out, hey, this is the first time I've ever seen you run into the church. To which the atheist called back, well, this is the first time I've ever seen the church on fire. Yes, we laugh, uh, but we should be asking ourselves, uh, what, do others see the Holy Spirit on fire in our church? With the coming of Pentecost, there was a fire ignited and the church blazed forth. It is known as the birth of the church. And we ask, does it still burn today? Will you pray with me? Holy and mighty God, we ask you just now to wash over us with calm, clarity, and courage. Calm, dear Lord, that uh, we might be able to shut out distractions, shut out concerns, and just tune into your spirit and your still small voice. Clarity. And we'll understand those very specific messages you have for each and every one of us interpreted to us through the Spirit. Encourage, O oh God, that we will step forward into whatever ministry you are calling us to, whatever mission you have for our lives. Through the power of Christ that we pray. Amen. Do you need help back there? Finding it? Okay. 
easy worship. We have a new technician today and got new stuff thrown at them. So, um, all right. So, Pentecost uh, was originally a, a festival of um, the Old Testament. And um, oh, I'm going to have to give her a few more instructions. Once it comes up, you'll have to go up to open and uh, look for this date. It'll be up in the upper left-hand corner, 31st. So Pentecost was originally a, a festival of the Old Testament. There's no specific date that is given there in the Bible for this particular festival. It was also called the Festival of Weeks because we find in Leviticus 23.15 uh, that there are instructions to the Israelites there to count seven weeks or 50 days after the Sabbath in order to calculate uh, a day of Pentecost. Pentecost does mean 50 and so the Pentecost that we see happening in, um, in the book of Acts is actually seven weeks after Passover, which makes it also, uh, amazingly enough, seven weeks after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When this first uh, Pentecost, we call it the first Pentecost, happened. Um, so Jesus, of course, during this time has been appearing to his followers um, several times. There are lots of uh, documentation in the Gospels of Jesus appearing to them, uh, convincing them that what he is bringing is a spiritual kingdom, not a political kingdom, and also proving to them that he has indeed come from God to them. And before he returns to God, as documented in uh, the Gospel of Luke and in Acts 1, Jesus gives some instructions to the disciples. Um, he tells them to stay in Jerusalem until they have received the gift that has been promised to them from God, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift, um, as the text says, uh, that is power from on high. And so they do remain in uh, Jerusalem as they have been instructed. And they uh, stay there and they worship with great joy. Uh, and they are continually in the temple praising God, according to Luke 24. So with Acts, uh, the second chapter, uh, the, the disciples are now restored to 12. Uh, they have replaced Judas Iscariot with Matthias, and they are all together in this one place, in this upper room, according to Acts, uh, the first chapter. And the last time they were together, gathered in an upper room, uh, they were celebrating the meal around Passover, and Jesus was with them. And at that meal, uh, according to the Gospel of John, Jesus gave them a new commandment to love one another as Jesus has loved them. And now they are in a, an upper room, once again, gathered together. Here they will receive the Holy Spirit that will give them the power to fulfill this command that Jesus had given them before. The Passion Translation tells the story this way. On the day of Pentecost, oh, on the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was all anyone could bear. Now, there are other places in Scripture where the Greek word wind is translated as breath or breath of life. So what we're having here is this new life being breathed into this small community. It can also be translated in Aramaic as like the roar of a groaning spirit. Then all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. You might remember that it was a pillar of fire that led the Israelites from their place of bondage to the promised land. And uh, now we have this same sort of pillar manifesting in this place uh, to initiate a new beginning uh, for this community, uh, going from the old structures into this new uh, power-filled life of the Holy Spirit. 
And each believer is uh, able to receive this overpowering flame, if you will, signified by the, the terminology, the word engulfed. Uh, so they got their own personal pillar of fire, if you will, uh, to empower them, to lead them through their life, a personal guide. And Jesus had promised them just that. He told them that I will send one like me, another advocate will be sent, one that will never leave you. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. So again, looking at the Greek, there are two Greek words here for filled, different ones that are used as we look at Acts 2, 1 through 4. In the second verse, the filled means in, uh, to be filled inwardly. And in the fourth verse, it means to be filled outwardly. So we might translate them as furnished and equipped. Um, but this is uh, the anointing of the Spirit that equips uh, those that receive it uh, for ministry. And as believers, each one then is filled with the Spirit. Uh, so they have this inward uh, filling for direction of their lives, plus this outward uh, filling of the Spirit uh, that uh, gives them the ability to complete the ministries that they are being called to. The Passion Translation said they were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. Now, this is a different kind of tongues than the gift of tongues that we uh, see Paul speak so much of in his letters. Uh, for Paul's congregations, the gift of tongues is uh, a spirit language that can only be understood by God and the Holy Spirit or someone who has the gift of interpretation. But what's happening here on this Pentecost is the disciples are speaking in languages they had not learned, languages they did not know, but languages that were very easily understood by others that were gathered there, languages of the Jewish people that were there in Jerusalem. So in this way, they were able to reach those that were gathered there in the city and tell them about the mighty works of God, God's deeds of power, or God's mighty wonders, depending on your translation. Indeed, this is the power of the Holy Spirit. It empowers each of us to be able to, to reach people where they are, to speak their language, so to speak, um, and then to allow us also to understand them better and to share with them what we know of God and God moving in our lives. This event was so loud and so intense that it drew the attention of those outside the building, we are told. Uh, and this always makes me think of the movie Sister Act, if you're familiar with that movie at all. In that movie, these nuns uh, are in this convent and they start singing with such amazing spirit that the sound goes out the doors and uh, this convent is in a very rough neighborhood and, and all these folks start hearing this very spirit-filled music and they start drifting in through the doors and they join in the worship. I imagine it to be something like that that happened on that day of Pentecost. There in Jerusalem, when the people of the city heard the roaring sound, crowds came running to where it was coming from. Kind of like when the church was on fire, they came to see what was going on and what they might be able to do. Stunned over what was happening because each one could hear the disciples speaking in his or her own language, bewildered, they said to one another, aren't these all Galileans? So how is it that we hear them speaking in our languages? And then there is a list of uh, countries, of places that these uh, Jews have hailed from. And uh, the list shows an amazing amount of diversity in the crowd and also shows a great distance uh, that many of them had come from. It says, all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? And so we might ask ourselves that same question. What does this mean? I can tell you that if we see Pentecost's significance simply as some miraculous event, then we are missing the new thing that is happening. We are missing, missing the empowerment and uh, the, the indwelling of the power of the Holy Spirit. 
We might liken that to someone who might receive a beautiful gift, a present that has been um, just wrapped in a beautiful, beautiful way. And they take, you know, they're very careful to remove the beautiful ribbon and to, to not tear the beautiful, expensive wrapping paper. And they, they notice the, the wonderful box that it's in. And then they take out the keys to a brand new, expensive car, luxury car. And they throw the keys away and say, oh, those are nice. And they go back to the box and the wrapping and, and talk about how beautiful they are and how they're just going to keep this ribbon and wrapping paper forever. We do not want to confuse the gift of Pentecost with the wrappings that it came in. This story is not about what the disciples are able to do, but what enables them to do it. It is very easy for us to write the story off as a once upon a time miraculous event and miss the power that is available to each and every one of us. We want to remember that this is something that all of us have the power uh, to, to receive. We have the power to receive this power. And that power then is uh, something that uh, guides us from the inside, but also then outwardly, right? This filling uh, gives us the ability to have the actions that we need for ministry and witness. And we need this power. And Jesus knew we would need it. If you'll remember his instructions before he left the disciples, he told them to sit tight and wait for the power of the spirit of truth that would be, would be given to them because he knew that they could not do greater works than these without the Holy Spirit. They needed that guide, that advocate, that source of power, and so do we. I want to share with you an illustration um, that um, I read in a devotion this uh, past week. And it talked about a, a glass of water. As you can see here, I have a glass filled with water. But if I um, <laughs> jostle that glass, um, I get water. It splashes on me, doesn't it? And whatever was in here, uh, the same thing would have happened. If I had tea in here, I would now have tea on my hands instead of water. If I had lemonade in here, I would now have lemonade on my hands instead of water. But when I disturb the glass, when it uh, meets friction, when it um, uh, is shaken up, then you have this dispersing of whatever is inside. It comes out and splashes on uh, the surroundings. The illustration said that we are like this glass of water. Whatever is inside of us, when we get jostled, when we get stressed, when we get shaken up, splashes out on those around us. So if our glass is filled with anger, then it's anger that splashes out of us when we are distressed and shaken up. If we are filled with joy, then it is joy, likewise, that splashes out on those around us. To me, this is especially uh, interesting illustration for Pentecost because I think of the disciples being so filled with the Holy Spirit that it splashed out of them in these miraculous ways. My prayer is that the church as a whole will also experience this filling to such a degree that that too is what we splash out on those around us so that those that encounter us experience the Holy Spirit as well. And know the mighty works of God. But how do we fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit? Well, I have this uh, glass of water here, and I'm going to use it for another illustration. If I were to pour cold water in here, then it would lower the temperature of the water that's in this glass. Also, if I were to pour hot water in here, it would raise the temperature of the glass, right? So if we want to be a, a, a glass of water that is hot and on fire with the Holy Spirit, then we have to be pouring into ourselves those things that will raise our temperature, that will inspire, uh, ignite the fire within us. And we do that by pouring into our lives through uh, the Word of God. We pour into our lives through prayer. We pour into our lives by associating with, with the saints, with those who are also fellow believers, and with others who are filled with the Spirit. If we let our glass just sit idly by, the world will quickly cool it off. 
If we only come to church maybe on Sundays, maybe worship that once a week and we do nothing else the rest of the week in order to keep the spirit in our glass, to keep that temperature up, then we become lukewarm at best. You know, after Pentecost, the church grew like dandelions in spring. There were 3,000 added to uh, the, the list of believers that very day as Peter spoke. They came and they sold their possessions and not just little things. They sold property and homes and land uh, and laid all the money at the disciples' feet because they were on fire, they were fired up, and they were all in. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you pray with me? Almighty, mighty God, we just ask you to fill us Each one that hears my voice just now, Lord, may they find an indwelling of the Spirit upon them. May they recognize the power that it gives them to do, yes, in the sensational things, Lord, but also to live our lives every single day. To guide that we make the right decisions. To direct that we know the way to go to empower us, Lord, to move out and to be your witness in this world. Bless us with that gift of the Spirit. Through Christ that we pray. Amen. (laughs) Well, we will have music, but we may not have words to the song later. Oh, is it starting to come back up? Okay. Has it been down all this time? Okay. Well, we're going to get this figured out. Anyway, as we move into this time of communion, I, 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 last night, um, my husband Jim and I watched the movie Harriet, which is something uh, we'd been wanting to watch for a long time, and we um, decided to watch it last night. And it's the story of Harriet, Harriet Tubman. And... Um, Amazing, amazing woman. And one of the things that I did not know until I um, watched the movie was how deep her connection was to God. How she moved so in the spirit. She, she listened to God and she followed what God said. Sometimes we forget that moving in the spirit also calls us to some... Um, we need to do what we're being asked to do. Um, I heard recently, if, um, you, if you haven't heard from God lately, maybe it's because you haven't followed the last directions he gave you. And when you think about that, that can kind of sting a little bit, but that is exactly what I'm talking about. She listened, she paid attention, and so God kept speaking to her and directing her, and she was able to do just miraculous things Uh, Just her and God, as she said. Uh, And when she experienced that and and witnessed to people about that, it changed their lives as well and how they related to God. There's an incident in the the movie where um, someone has observed her and comes up to her and she says, can I trust you? And he said, no one should ever trust me but I think you can because I have seen that you are someone who speaks to God and God listens to you. And I wondered if you could introduce me. When we live in the spirit and exhibit what God is doing in our lives, others want us to help show them who God is, to introduce them to God. And that's what it is to live in the spirit, to to have that power to change the lives of others. Christ knew that we needed that, that there was no way we could do greater works than these. There was no way we could live up to loving others as he loves us without the power of the Spirit within us. When we come to this table, we are reminded of that. We are reminded of the gift that he gave us, not only through his death and resurrection, but also in sending the Spirit to us as well. 
Jesus and his disciples were gathered in that large upper room when he gave them that new commandment. And they were there to celebrate the Passover. Jesus knew that those surrounding him, those seated at his table, well, they were excited about what was happening, but he knew that they were going to face some very difficult days ahead. He knew everything that was before him. He knew about um, betrayal and, and that Peter would deny him and that they'd all be hiding away, uh, fearful, overcome with fear, not knowing what to do. He knew about the trial. He knew about the cross and everything that came with it. He knew about the tomb. But you see, with all of that, he also knew about resurrection. He knew about the power of light and life, of love and grace that poured out through resurrection. And the joy of that enabled him to stay there for that one last supper. Late in the meal, he stood and he took bread and he lifted it to heaven and blessed it. He broke it and he passed it among them. He said to them, take and eat of this, all of you. This represents my body given in sacrifice for you. I ask that when you do this in the future, you remember me and my amazing love for you. He stood again and took a cup and lifted that to heaven and blessed it and passed that among them as well, saying, take and drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. And when you do this, remember me and my love for you. For these gifts, let us pray. Holy One, we are so very grateful for these gifts of bread and cup. We are grateful, O God, for what they represent and for all you have given us. We ask you to bless us in this time where we commune with you and with one another across the distance of time and space. Bless this bread and this cup, Lord, that they might empower us to be your witness in this world. It is through your holy name that we pray. Amen. Let us enjoy the music, uh, a gift from Mike Morris as we partake. Come Sunday.
And through his blood, we are made new. We come now to that time in our uh, service where we um, give our offerings, uh, something that God has blessed us with, ask us to be good stewards of. If you have your monetary offering, you might uh, place that there, uh, what you're going to be mailing to the church. You can put that in <clears throat> your designated space, but also uh, your prayers. Prayers of intercession are uh, vitally important just now, and they too are an offering to God. And so we can place those in as well. Let us receive our offerings. Will you pray with me? Holy One, we ask you to receive these gifts, to bless these gifts and givers, O oh God, as we seek for you to just take them and, and do the miraculous thing you can, Lord. Um, may they increase, may we decrease, so that all things bring glory to you. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Uh, uh, thank you again to uh, Mike Morris for his um, rendition of Come Sunday. That was a wonderful offering for us as well. So my challenge to you this week is to find ways to keep pouring the Spirit into your life uh, through the Word, through um, prayer, through those that you associate with. Uh, just keep building yourself up and, and keep that fire going so that you too are moving and working in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, as we close out, remember that God is with you always. It doesn't matter what we're going through, what difficulties we might be facing, trials or hardships. God is moving in us, around us, through us, between us. God is in us indeed. And that is the heart of the matter. We are all connected through that one spirit and the love of God. Let us close by singing together, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Thanks again for being here. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Then my Lord spoke, out of His mouth came fire and smoke. All around me looked so fine. Ask my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Jordan River, chilly and cold, chills the body, not the soul. Ain't but one train on this track Runs to heaven and right back Every time I feel the Spirit Moving in my heart, I will pray Yes, every time I feel the Spirit Moving in my heart, I will pray I have heartache, I have woe I have trouble here below while God leads me, I'll not fear. I am sheltered by God's care. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Go with the peace of Christ. Amen.